In this video, we are going to address something on my Twin Turbo 2021 Mach 1, but honestly, I think this applies to a lot of other cars as well, a lot of modern cars specifically. This car has an electronic boost controller, given that it has twin turbos, so you can turn the boost up and down on the fly, and it works great. The problem is, on an older car, like say my 64 Mercury there, it's very easy to find a switch 12 volt source, meaning when the key is on, you have 12 volts, when the key is off, it's off, right? On modern cars like this one, turning the key off or pressing the off button doesn't necessarily turn the car fully off immediately. So what happens is with my boost controller, the way I have it wired in, I thought I was on a 12 volt switch source and it sort of is. But when you turn the key off, power remains for a little bit. The problem with a boost controller is that the boost controller starts working right at the point between vacuum and boost, right? Which is ambient pressure. Well, what pressure is in the intake manifold when the engine's off? Ambient. So at that point, when you turn the car off, you will hear clicking. Oh, hear that noise? That noise would continue because this thing would hover right around zero and you'd hear it click and click and click. From the max solenoid up front, because it's thinking that the car is going to a boost and over time that will drain your battery. So we are gonna install this kill switch right here. Um, it's an LED illuminated switch. I got this one from Home Depot. You can get one from AutoZone, whatever. We'll show you what this is. We're gonna take the center console apart and show you how to wire one of these in. So you can turn that off so when the car is off, it can be 100% off. I'll show you where the little solenoid is. This is where I've got the solenoid mounted. Here is the line running to it. And then this just kind of sneaks through here and gets hidden back in the car. And then if we open up the driver's side door, I'll show you where the boost controller is located. This allows me to turn my boost up and down, different settings, gain, sensitivity, all that stuff, scramble. Um, and it's great. I hid the wires, but everything is hidden up under here. So we're going to have to take off this portion right here um, and get underneath it and then figure out where we want to install the switch. So step one is to get in here and you've got to pop these side covers off and there's going to be two screws on each side. So I may have to slit, set the camera down and carefully get in under here and pry these off. Once we pry those off, then from here, you lift this up and then we're going to pop some things out of there. And then I'll see if I can do this without taking the shifter off. I may have to completely unscrew this knob. Actually, it's coming off pretty easy. All right, never mind. I lied. Sometimes they say these are hard to get off, but this one wasn't. So we will take the shifter off. So the trick with this is to reach your hand up and pull from here, pull, pull, and they'll just keep popping off and this thing will come right off. And there's actually a little magnet here, which is pretty helpful because when you undo the screws down here, you can just drop them on your magnet so you don't lose them. Kind of a smart idea. Side. So boom, boom, boom. And then just carefully pop this off. The seat might be in the wrong spot. We're gonna move it back. So we've got plenty of room here. And then, boom, lay that down there on the floor. Here are the screws I was talking about, these little guys. And I think they're seven millimeter, there's four of them, and you'll take those out next. Wrench with the other. Here we go, we'll use our magnet, boom. Do the other side. Okay, the next part is you can get your hands under here or if you have a trim tool, and we are gonna pry this up. Um, I'm doing it with my hands, and I've already got this side loose. I'm gonna probably put the camera down. I wouldn't use a screwdriver here. I would use a plastic trim tool so that you don't mar the surface, but basically you'll pull up all around here, and then we'll be able to kind of start sliding this off. But there are some electrical connectors under there for like lights and things like that, that we will need to be mindful of. So let me set the camera down, pop it loose, and then I'll show you, but just get your hands under there and just start prying. Okay, we've got it popped loose, okay? Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reach our hand up underneath here and there's clips that hold in the shifter bezel. We're gonna pop that loose so we can take this out entirely and just give ourselves more space. I know it's tempting to go in here and to try and pry this way. Don't do that, you could crack this, just you won't be able to see very well, but get underneath there, press up, you'll feel the little um, clips around here and then this will come off and we can set that aside. Okay, so pushing from underneath, I was able to push these little orange clips up. I'll get my hand out from underneath there and then this whole piece should, should more or less come off. So I undid this clip right here 
just squeeze that and it comes loose. And then there's one more clip down there that I will have to undo. Then I can pop this whole piece out. So how I had done this, and there's different ways to do it, was I spliced into the cigarette lighter. Um, the cigarette lighter had power uh, when the car was on and it was seemingly off when the car is off, but as we know, that's not fully the case. So, um, those are my two wires. Now these two right here, these are extra accessories. If you wanted to like data log, you could add a scramble button. We didn't need those. They don't go to anything or do anything. So they're just kind of out of the way here, but here's how I did it. Um, and what we're going to basically do is need to break this connection and then come back in and add in our switch. And we're going to add it in on, on this side over here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and explain this. So this is the switch if you want to buy the same one. They have these that are rectangular. This one is circular, so you can use a step drill to install it and then put it in there. It's black. When you turn it on, you're going to have a red LED. And when it's off, it'll be off so you know everything is working. Now, on the back here, it's going to say that there's three connections, one, two, and three. One, they call line, two, they call load, and three, they call neutral. So from a car standpoint, your line is your 12 volt from 12 volts positive from the battery. So line is in, okay? Going out to your accessory, in our case, our boost controller is going to be um, the load, okay? And then number three is a neutral, which is your ground. So basically, these two wires, this is going in between those wires. So you have power coming in. When you hit the switch, you are connecting, you're connecting the circuit, okay? So that's how this works. It's super simple. Um, some people get tripped up because they're like, wait, I've got a positive and uh, a ground and I've got three, what do I do? Well, basically coming in on one side is your positive in and coming out is your other. So this is just in between, it's just bridging in series between what would normally just be like that. Okay, let's take a look at how I wired this. So remember one, two, and three, line, load, and neutral. So the red, or I'm sorry, well, what would be the red, you know, coming from the battery, I didn't have red, so I'm using orange. So this orange wire is what's getting 12 volts into the switch. When we close the switch, we connect the circuit to send it to the yellow wire. So in this case, this is going out to our load or our boost controller, okay, whatever you want to power. This, this brown or black wire here, it's kind of hard to tell on the camera, that is your neutral or your ground. If you didn't connect this, you could still use this as a switch, but the LED wouldn't turn on. If you want the LED to turn on, which I think is beneficial, you will need to connect this wire to your ground. We'll show you in the car. So using a right angle drill, I was able to get here and put a hole basically right in between where the USB and the cigarette lighter will go. And that's where I'm gonna mount my switch. Time to break out whatever type of tools you like to use to do your wiring. So you can do a crimp connection, you could do soldering, whatever you would like. Just make it nice and neat, follow the instructions just like on the bench. We're tying in, orange is power from the battery and to the 12 volt accessory. Yellow is going to the boost controller and that brown wire is tying in to the ground that otherwise went to the 12 volt cigarette lighter, whatever you want to call it. All right, now we've got the car off and we are off. If I come down here, if I reach in, hit that on, boom. Now it kicks it on. Ah, oh, hear that noise? That noise would continue because this thing would hover right around zero and you'd hear it click and click and click. But now you don't have to worry about it. You just flip the switch, boom, it's off. Awesome. Totally hidden in there. You don't even notice it. It doesn't get in the way of anything else. We've still got our USB. We still got power if we want to hook something up. Shut this. No one is the wiser, but you can always turn that off. And then you hand the car over to somebody and it's just going to be on wastegate, you know? So if you're driving around 91, you don't want anyone actually bumping that and knocking the boost up, just turn it off and this will keep you from killing your battery. So hopefully you guys found this beneficial and you can apply this kind of same idea to your new Mustang or, or muscle car. If you like this car and you think it's cool, well, guess what? It is currently up for sale. You're probably asking yourself, why am I doing more projects on it if it's up for sale? Honestly, I hate to give something to somebody and not give, but sell something to somebody and it has something that I know just isn't perfectly right. So. We wanted to get that switch installed. We don't want to kill the battery. 
you know, especially if you don't drive this a lot during the winter, you drive it every once in a while, you shut it off, it's clicking, it's annoying. So we fixed that, but this car is up for sale. Um, and it's on Streetcar Marketplace, it's on Facebook Marketplace, it's a bunch of different things. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions, I'll shoot you the ad. Um, you can watch my channel and see everything that I've done to it. You can figure out how much power it makes, all that stuff. Um, and it's for sale, so it could be your car. And, and honestly, the reason I'm selling it is I just don't drive it quite as much as I used to. It was fun to take out racing and whatnot, but you can't do that all the time. And you could drive this car every day. Um, you really, truly could. Um, but I just, somebody else needs to enjoy it. They'll enjoy it more than I will. Um, I kind of been getting into the older stuff too, a little bit more. So I don't know. It's time for this car to find a new home. So hopefully you enjoyed watching it on the channel and hopefully somebody else can buy it and maybe put it on their channel or take it racing and just have fun, enjoy it. Hopefully it's one of you guys. Um, either way, we will see you next time on Truck and Roll. Thanks again for watching.